another one? What's with these guys? Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 72, another episode. Another week for us Manchester United fans, of course. I hope you guys have had a good weekend as well. For those who are non-Manchester United fans, for those Manchester United fans, I hope it was okay. For, but for those who are Manchester United fans and support Ivory Coast, I understand it's been a hard week for us, a hard weekend. Back-to-back -back draws, back-to-back -back point drop, two points dropped. It is what it is. But yes, Manchester United fans, you are here for what you want. Your Manchester United podcast reflecting on the game against Aston Villa. As always, remember to, um, to click on the link description if you want to contribute to this channel via PayPal. Of course, click that link. And of course, catch us on the live for that super chat. Send your super chat. But yes, again, let's get live and kicking because it's the catch up volume 72. And we're about to talk about our beloved team, Manchester United, even though we've had a shit weekend. It is what it is. But guys, let's get straight into it. I'm about to introduce you to the guys, the panel. Let me introduce you first of all to Jerome, big brother Jerome. How you doing, bro? How was your weekend? How is everything, brother? Yeah, man, I'm all good, bro. Um, obviously, the weekend was good, went quickly as usual. Back to the working week quickly. Um, minus the result, I think it was pretty chill for me, really. But it's something that's hard to chill out when you're watching United play, but you just got to try and deal with it the best you can, really, whatever result comes. Exactly. It is what it is. Whatever the result comes, we have just have to deal with it. And we've been dealing with it for so many years. Next in line, Munzi. Munzi's just done his podcast, guys. Make sure you go and check it out. Subscribe, smash that like button. Munzi, how's everything? How are you? How was your weekend? Yeah, it was a short weekend. I was working Saturday morning. But yeah, yeah, it was all right until the football. I still not got over it. I don't know why, <laughs> but I still, still not got over it. But yeah, I'm glad to be back. Uh, yes, yes. And last, not least, of course, we'll be drained by a pretty flocker if it's possible. But yes, from the football capital itself, Boche, all the way from Australia, just waking up. Looking, looking live, fresh, you know. He just woke up like this and he's still looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boche, how, how are you, you gentlemen? How I'm, your I'm good, boys. I'm good, bro. I'm good. Um. The weekend, yeah, like the boys were saying, minus the result, it has, hasn't been too bad. I mean, the, uh, my start to the year wasn't really the best after all my social media have been hacked. But I'm, I got one of them back. So, you know, it's a, the only probably positive <laughs> this year at the moment. Um, but, yeah, it, it's good to have football back in a sense um, with all these games being postponed and all that. But, yeah, thanks for having me on. And we're, I'm ready to get stuck into our beloved team. Yeah, definitely our beloved team. But of course, guys, as you know, you're here for Manchester United, of course. And let's go straight into it. And let me put myself into that self-cam and everything. <sighs> Again, guys, of course, it's Aston Villa 2, Manchester United 2. Manchester United <laughs> dropping two points against Aston Villa after going two goals up. And then for the last 15 minutes where everything went down, everything went pear shaped the Titanic sink went down. Manchester United dropped those two points against Aston Villa. Disgusting to us. Just showing that they got they got no balls. Oh, my overall thoughts, first of all, guys, regarding this game, 
Manchester United for the first 45 minutes, that first half were, were a very good team. They did everything well. They were on the front foot. They gave Aston Villa problems. Aston Villa couldn't handle us at times. We looked very good on the wings as well. The um, interplay as well was all right. There were things. The pressing was okay. It wasn't the best. They weren't at the same time, they weren't playing the Ralph Ragnick way, but you, you saw a better improvement compared to what we expected from that Monday episode against uh, Aston Villa in the FA Cup. It's a funny thing, we all thought that if we play the same way that we played against Aston Villa in the FA Cup, we might lose. But guess what? We ended up drawing. We was on a winning, we was on a winning front four at one stage, ended up drawing. Second half, that's where everything went wrong. Again, the, the substitutions were the wrong substitution, in my opinion. We needed control, and we really, really didn't get that from um, Ragnick substitutions. Yes, some may say that Van der Beek should have came on. I agree as well, that he should have came on to bring us some control, something, because they needed something, and that was the problem. And Aston Villa themselves capitalised on that by bringing on Coutinho and etc. to pile on pressure. But Manchester United, as men, as players... I can't blame a manager for this. I know that these players are not good enough. They don't have the cojones. They don't have the balls. It is what it is with these guys. They're F-boys for like what they... I call them one-minute men as well because they can't give you a 90 minutes performance. No, they can't satisfy their women. They can't satisfy us on the pitch. So they will never be able to satisfy their women on the pitch. They can't make us scream on the pitch. So what makes you think they can make their scream, women scream in the bedroom? The only person that can do that is Ronaldo because he's got her twins. So he's given her extra time. You get me? He makes us scream. We all say C. <laughs> but yes. Guys, yeah, sorry, I had to moan there. But I'm going to bring that to you, Jerome. Um, what was your overall thoughts on the game? Well, the game itself was a very frustrating game. Started off all right. To be fair, we couldn't have been any worse than he was against Villa in the Cup on Monday, so I kind of expected some sort of reaction. We got the goal through a mistake from the Villa keeper, and I believe the second goal as well was a mistake in Villa's build-up play as well, and we capitalised on that. So we got the two-goal lead, and we thought, yeah, we can just keep the ball and just see at the game 2-0, professionally 2-0 away win. But as you know, the team is weak mentally. And the team's not fit. So the team faded in that second half. And if it went on for another 10 minutes, we would have probably ended up losing. Um, it's just shocking how the team can't string three or four passes together, especially when they're under pressure. It's quite embarrassing, really. And it was just a frustrating end to the game after a positive start. So, when I, after that game, I was just thinking, well, where do we go from here? If we're struggling against mid-table teams, we do respect to Villa, but they're 13th in the Premier League and we're struggling to beat them. And we scored through two mistakes. And in that game as well, it seemed like we were just like struggling to create clear-cut chances. And I know that Ralph's trying to get the defence more solid from the previous regime, but it looks like he's still working on getting the balance right in the, in the team. But in terms of that game, it was just a very, very frustrating end to it. So, we just have to see what happens going forward. But these players, these, we need a lot of changes in this in this team that we've got. Because we haven't played any big games in the, in the last six weeks. And only God knows how we're going to perform when we start playing Liverpool and City again. Because after that performance... Confidence is quite low at the moment in terms of expectations for the remainder of the season. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. Com um, confidence is quite low as Man United fans. I'm going to bring it up to you, Munzi. Munzi, what was your overall thoughts on the game? Well, first half, I thought it was probably the best we played under Ralph. Um, second half, as soon as Marriage got that yellow card, um, yeah, that was match out of the game. Um, I just think we lack players on the bit. I know you said like before the players aren't good enough. Can't really blame Ralph, but there was player. You know, I just don't know. Just I just thought Ralph could have brought someone on just to change it, and then if if, if we wouldn't have won, or he just carried on the same, um, then fair enough. But he didn't. Um, I don't know what Cavani was doing, booting the ball up in here like a kid. 
and then Dallo, well, I've always said Dallo ain't good enough. So, but yeah, I see it back now. I'm still annoyed about it, but I just think it was better than Monday night. Monday night was awful, but we won. Um, but yeah, the first half was, it's, it's, it's promising signs, but we just got to keep up for 90 minutes, to be fair. No, absolutely, absolutely. I'm going to bring it up to you, Boche. Boche, overall, what was your thoughts on the game as well? Yeah, yeah. Look, man, with the first half, like the boys were saying, I think it was it was probably one of our better performances under Ralph in that in that first half. We got the goal. Yes, it was a mistake by Martinez, but you know we we struggled to get a first goal in like the first fifteen minutes. You know, I think that's only the what the second the second time this season. Um, and we got that goal and I thought, you know what, we're creating a few chances, a few half chances. And we weren't conceding a lot of chances as well in, in, in the first half. In the second half, literally, it was like we were space jammed. The players came out. It was a totally different squad. Um, clueless. It, 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 was literally, it was literally the same things that we've seen under Oli and even under Ralph as well. Just no one knows how to pass. Um no communication. It, it, it completely looked like another team, and it looked like we were we were the team in, in that bottom half where where Villa are, and Villa was was you know competing for a top four position or 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 a um or a top of the table. Do you know what I mean? So it's like it's very it, it's I just don't get what what is going on at, at the club at the moment, mate. Because it's like we've got the players, we've got rid of the coaching staff, we got rid of the manager. Um, there's a full clear out, we, you know, where, and it's still the same thing. So I don't, I don't know what is going on. They, they, some of these players maybe are too big for their boots. They're thinking that, you know, my name is uh, so and so that I don't have to make these runs. I get paid this much, so I'm not really gonna bust my ass uh, to win the ball. Um, you know, uh, he's he's not putting in any effort, so why should I? Why should I kill myself for the team? And it's and it's a ripple effect on the whole squad, and then it affects some of the players that actually wanna actually wanna be there and actually wanna play. So overall, in terms of the performance, I thought first half was great. Second half, I mean, they absolutely bottled it. Every week they come out in little press conferences and little interviews talking about how they uh, they know what the problems are. They're trying to fix this. They're trying to fix that. We need to be better. They keep using that word. We need to be better. Well, where is that? We haven't seen it yet. I mean, it's been how long now? You know, you, you, you guys, are, most of these players are thrown manager under the bus <laughs> week in, week out, and then you're coming out doing interviews saying um, the mentality is not right and this is not right. And, uh, you know, some players don't want to be here. And then some players are coming out and saying they don't want to be here. It doesn't. It doesn't help the team at all. So I don't know. I don't know where we go from here, boys, to be, to be honest with this club. I have no idea. There was a, in a cup in there for a second. Yes. But yes, guys, Butcher himself doesn't know where we need to go from here. As always, guys, make sure you subscribe, smash that like button, remember to share. I'm just about to bring up to Jeg to Srex. Big up to you as well. Big up, bro. Um, Sorry for le- being late. That's all right. Lateness is greatness, as I say, bro. You get me? So, like, yeah, spit some facts, man. Um, What was your overall thoughts on Manchester United versus Acevedo, the 2 2 draw? To be fair, I'm not surprised. Looking at their first performance against them when we drew 1-1, it's pretty much what I expected, to be fair. The only surprise that I do have is the fact that Bruno Fernandes came out and said that he thought that Man United controlled the game. We didn't control anything, especially not in the second half. Aston Villa were playing like the better team. And Ramsey, once again, was man of the match. Fortunately for me, United just don't have good players, or not good midfielders anyway. When we look at Matic and Fred, three and a half star players, three star players. Of course, we're not going to control the game with those sort of midfielders. Matic is too old. He can't move about. And Fred, uh, Fred, for me, he's not elite. We just need to improve our squad. And I feel once we do that, we can go forward. But until then, performances like Aston Villa don't surprise me. And to be 2-0 up, Ragnick has to get some blame as well because his substitutions were baffling. Why make two substitutions in the 88th minute? It makes zero sense. So for me, Ragnick takes some responsibility in that performance, but ultimately, the boys ain't good enough. And I'm not surprised at all, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. 
I'm saying I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't blame you for the way you feel. We all feel that same way as well, man. These players are not good enough. Mm-hmm. These good players are t- just not good enough at all, man. Let me bring everyone back into the conversation, of course, so we can discuss the match in, in full details. Guys, as well, remember, if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and remember to share as well. Let us know what your thoughts are on, on the game as well. Big up to you, Solo, as well, for tuning in. Big up to, the, of course, Main Night Agenda. Make sure, guys, if you're watching on the play, but make sure you subscribe to Main Night Agenda. Make sure you subscribe to Football Capital. Make sure you subscribe to Monzi Talks as well. They're all doing their work. But yes, guys, uh, just uh, took some breath, all that promo as well. Get the breath out of you. You get me? But yes, guys, back into the game. Of course, Manchester United in that first 45 minutes, not doing, as again, I said, sorry, doing well, of course, had an exceptional first 45 minutes. Bruno Fernandes scoring a goal. Going underneath bottle fingers, Martinez. Guys, um, I'm going to start off with you, uh, Jex, as well. Again, that first 45 minutes, um, of course, after Jex, anyone can jump in. And then, obviously, once I press that bell, we move on to the next half. But, yes, Jex, um, that first 45 minutes, what was your thoughts on that? What was it, What were you impressed by? A lot of people were impressed by the first 45. But to be honest with you, I just thought it was an OK performance in the first 45. It was a lucky goal for the first goal. Bruno's free kick should have been saved. Um, I was enjoying the fact that we was moving a bit forward. It was We were controlling aspects of the game in the first half. We created one or two chances, but it didn't really impress me that much, um, to be totally honest with you. It didn't at all. I think Bruno was probably one of our better players, albeit he was passing the ball to different locations that... His passing range confuses me sometimes because he's got the ability, but he just moves mad on the pitch and just passes the ball to players that where players should be, but they're not there, you know? He misplaces a lot of, of balls. So, um, <sighs> yeah, I think you're right there, man. About that first half, you know, I'm sorry, nothing really excited me about that. First yeah, half. yeah, I, I get what you mean in terms of it. It wasn't really the greatest, but in terms of what we have seen in the last couple of weeks, <laughs> for that to, to be an okay performance, you know, that's what we're getting from these players at the moment. You know what I mean? Like, it was like it, it literally like one of our better performances under Ralph, and it wasn't even that great. Like, you, you, I think you're right there. But um, if, you, if we're looking, trying to find positives, I think um, the movement from Malanga was fantastic, I think, in my opinion. Um, even though, and it's and it's funny, it's funny that we see this. That we talk about some of the young players in our squad, you know, your Greenwoods, um, your Rashfords, and, and players like that who who play up front in that number nine role or even out wide. You, you you're like to them for them to have someone like Cavani and Ronaldo in the team to maybe learn from. It's just so weird that you, Anthony Alang- Alanga was the only one making the Cavani movements. I'm looking at him. He's making the run, doesn't get the ball, come back on side, make another run. Not like we see with Greenwood and Rashford where they don't make, they don't get the ball and it's arms in the air or they stop their run. Like we've seen maybe Rashford a little bit in the, the first Villa game in the FA Cup. So it's like, no wonder, no wonder Elanga is starting over Martial and all these other players because there's a little bit of a hunger there. And I think that was one of the, the positives that we I got from from this game, that mm-hmm. hey look if the young if the younger players if the youth players are going to show a bit more hunger, get them all on. Who cares what pay packet the rest of you guys are on? If you don't want to bust your ass for the team, get out. Put put Medri on when he comes back um, yes, from Africa Cup. Mm-hmm. Put all these players on that want to play and gonna gonna actually all right, do what the manager say or, or, or try to do what the manager says. Because there was a lot of pressing from Alanga, uh, a lot of movement. He got the ball. He tried to move it as quick as he can. Maybe there was a few times where maybe he should have passed to Cavani for, for a shot on target. But he was hungry. You can see he was hungry to take that shot and get a goal on target where how many in the last couple of games we can't even get a shot on. So that was a, a, a good positive for us, I think. Yeah, absolute positive. Alenga as well, exceptionally well. We'll talk about Alenga a bit later, guys, when we discuss the players. As well, In this, of course, Bruno's goal came in. Manchester United going to the second half. Scoring the second goal as well in the 70th minute. Manchester United doing well. And then everything fell down from that. <coughs> Unable to control the midfield. Not making a change in the midfield. Um, I want to throw it to you, Jerome. Um, 
What are your thoughts on the second half? Manchester United scoring the goal, 2 0 up, and then after that, everything just going wrong. Yeah, in that second half, I think it's just a case of after we got the second goal, the team just got tired and they was, just wasn't capable to see the game out. And I think that's something that Ralph's got to work on the team's fitness level because it's clear to see that there was a lack of proper training under the previous regime because. We saw in the first game against Crystal Palace, we had a good 30 minutes and then the team faded after doing that pressing in the second half. So the team's still adjusting to Ralph, which is why you saw how easily Villa got through us towards the end of the second half. And the ease at which they got through us was a bit concerning because we didn't even have that players like Maguire that was starting in the defence. We had like a good lineup in that back four. And you expected there was enough pace and experience to, to see the game out. But the way just getting one twos and players, I think it was it means or someone that ran through like three United players and then did a one two with Coutinho and then scored. When I saw that, I thought, no, nah, this this United team needs a lot of work. We should teams should not be scoring goals like that against our defense like that. So the way that we finished, where we just finished like we just literally swept that draw. There's, a, there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of work to be done because if there was another 10 minutes, we would have probably end up losing because we just, we just lacked a lot of control of the game and we just started misplacing a lot of passes. It's just almost as if the team just lost their concentration and their time just kicked in and all basic five-yard passes were just going astray, especially in midfield where, where Ralph talked about trying to control games, but we literally just lost control in that second half and just scraped that draw in the end. Yeah, definitely. Ralph did say that control, control, control. And in, in reality, when it comes to the practical side, we're not controlling midfield. It's, it's just a matter of personnel sometimes. But I want to throw it to you. Um, um, sorry, uh, Monzi. You, of course, um, Boche spoke um, glowingly about Elenga. You was also impressed with Anthony Elenga himself. Um, what was your thoughts on Anthony Elenga's performance? Well, I thought it was one of the better ones. You know, he's done better than Rashford has. Um, you know, my thoughts on Rashford last season, but he was he, he was injured a lot last season, so I let him off. But this season, I don't know, I don't know what what's going on. I think, you know, he's, he's just you know, as as one of your videos said, is he still going to be is he United quality? Because you know, I think he's got it. He's just he's just like. It's just not performing at the moment. I don't know what's going on with him. Um, but yeah, Alanga, Alanga was a breath of fresh air. And as, um, as someone said, you know, put, put the youth in. You know, you've got nothing to fear. Just go out there, play for the shirt. And you, you say about Cavani, Cavani's played, uh, scored one goal since he started for United. He started, trying to get to Everton. One goal. It's not good enough. Um, you know, and I know Cavani does this, does that. You know, he's 30. Is he 34? Was he older than that? He's thirty-four. He's going to leave at the end of the season. Is he? Is he bothered? Is he bothered if he? You know, is he bothered? He does. I know <clears throat> he does look bothered, but you know, the the goal he give away, he give the goal away, putting that ball up in the air. But Alanga, you know, as soon as Alanga come off, I thought we lost the pace. Greenwood went a bit a well. Um, Sancho, Sancho didn't do a lot either. But yeah, Alanga was man of the match until he went off. But yeah, as, as Jerome said, we just lost it in the midfield. Matic was, you know, I think Matic could have got his walking stick out. You know what I mean? That's how bad he got. Um, we just missed, I can't believe I'm saying it, we missed McTominay just to have someone extra on to come on and change it with a bit of, you know, we all know we haven't got a great midfield. We all know that. <clears throat> and that's where we get done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'll just throw in there, like with, with the stick that Rashford is getting, right? I do agree that he should have been dropped because the performances haven't been haven't been the best, but I also think it's more than just maybe coming back from that injury. I think it might, it just looks like there's, it's, it's more on the mental health side than it is anything to do with football. It just feels like that. There's, he, it doesn't, it doesn't look like he's playing with any sort of energy. There's no, like, it's like he doesn't communicate with the rest of the team. There's, he doesn't have that smile on his face. Um, like we've seen even last season. So I think it's more than just um, the football that, has to be uh, we have to worry about uh, Rashford. So the people behind the scenes, whether he got dropped for that for that reason more so than his football, and hopefully they can fix that. But I think we've got to remember when Rashford came back in, he came back in against Leicester, scored 
scored almost straight away, and then our defense decided to, to bottle it and throw the game away. And then look at the run that we that we were we, we went into Liverpool, um, uh, Man City. We had a few difficult Champions League games, which, which one of them I think it was the uh, Atalanta Villarreal where he started the comeback. He scored the goal to get start the comeback. So we've thrown Marcus Rashford into these games where the whole team has been horrible, and now we're like, go on and save us. And now we're putting everything on his on on his shoulders that. You're not good enough, football IQ. And it's, everyone's right when they say that, 100%. And I do believe he should have been dropped because if you're not performing, for whatever reason, football, mental health, or whatever family thing is, what are you going to come off for? What are you going to cut me off for? Yeah? I just think we, mm. they, we, we don't need to put that much pressure on, on Marcus Rashford's shoulders. And... <laughs> Wrap it up. I'm wrapping it up. I think, I think uh, with Cavani, I think his movement is very important because the runs that he makes opens up space for players like Bruno, players like Ronaldo when he's playing um, Greenwood as well to take to take them shots. So I think, I know I know his age, but I think Cavani plays an important part, bro, even though he doesn't score one goal or whatever it might be. That is fantastic, bro. He had to get the Rashford in there, you know, you know, which is, it's all right, you know, I understand exactly what he's trying to say there, Poche. Guys, as well, let us know what your thoughts of, of the game, the first half, the second half, for those who are watching as well, those who are watching on the playback, smash that like button. We're going to move it on to, of course, quickly, just everyone's match, man of the match, donkey of the match, and then we move on to the players and, of course, managers and media reaction. I want to start off with you, Boche. Um, quickly, who's your man of the match and who was your donkey of the match? I'm going to give man of the match to, to Alenga. I think, yeah, like like I mentioned before about his performance. And I'm going to say Fred, bro, as, as a donkey of the match because I think if you're playing in that midfield, you need to control the game. And it was literally off the kickoff. We passed the ball out off the kickoff. So we can't even do that, right? Um, so, yeah, Fred, donkey of the match. And what about you, Jerome? Who was your man of the match? And also, who was your donkey of the match? Yeah, definitely Elanga was my man of the match. He was just a breath of fresh air. As the guy said, he was out going out there with no fear, bright spark, using his pace, energy and enthusiasm. Hopefully long term, that rubs off on the rest of the team and helps push the team forward. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing more from Elanga. I definitely agree. Fred was definitely my donkey of the match. I didn't see nothing good from him in this game and... He just Nothing. always gets made in five yard passes, and he just looks like a bit of a nuisance around the pitch. Um, he just doesn't look like he's got any good positional sense as well. So yeah, he just he's the one that just kind of mess up the midfield balance really. So I definitely say he's a donkey the match. And of course, Jags, what about you? Who was your man in the match, and also who was your donkey of the match? And after that, Munzi, you let us know. Um, I. Agree with the boys that Elenga was on point. He was energetic. He was a uh, breath of fresh air. And I feel like Rashford shouldn't be starting. Um, he needs a break. He needs three, four weeks off. I said two weeks last week. Three, four weeks off. Elenga needs to be in the mix because he gave us something that we haven't seen for a little while, even with Sancho. Sancho hasn't been performing. Sancho came on and replaced Elanga, and he didn't fuck all. So my donkey would go to Sancho, unfortunately. He didn't play for too long, but he didn't show or provide Man United with nothing going forward. So Sancho needs to look in the mirror and see, ask himself some questions, because I don't really know what's going on with him as well. Um, and my man of the match... Elanga, very close, but seeing as Bruno got the two goals, I'd give it to Bruno. Yeah. And Monzi? Um, yeah, man of the match is Elanga. Uh, yeah, as I said earlier, breath of fresh air. My donkey in a match is Dallow. Bloke can't defend for Toppy. I can defend better than Dallow, and I'm flipping 19 stone, whatever. Do you know what I mean? He can't defend for Toppy. I would have given it to Cavani, but no, I'm giving it to Dallow. I just think should have let him go away some Milan when we did. Um but yeah, so Dallo. It's, uh, wow, what what interesting things, you know. Big up to Elms as well, who said he's just tuned in. Asking what have you missed? We've just missed us discussing the match. We're about to round it up with the match as well. And of course, his man in the match was Anthony Alenga. He's donkey of the match boy. The donkey boy, I don't know. 
Man, the centre of the park is the whole of the donkey of the match. He also said, what can you do with a few minutes to, to go, Jay? I disagree with you. And he also said, actually, Cavani was poor. My man, the match is quite different, of course. Um, I have to go with Bruno Fernandes. Um, of course, I'm all, all, I'm all about the money. When you flash the money to me, you guys are all about the hard work and all that stuff, Anti and Lenga, X, Y, and Z. Me, I'm about the goals and assists and all that kind of stuff. Because I just thought he deserved it. Yeah. I mean, he was exceptional, um, Bruno, as well. Especially, he was a bit more disciplined compared to previous games. He wasn't doing the Hollywood passes, the no-look touches, no-look passes, and etc. He was instrumental. But Anti Lenga was equally up there. I was really impressed. And I have to agree with you guys. Yes, Ralph Mark Schreifer needs a, a holiday where he can stare at the ocean for a good five hours and wonder about his life. You know, that's what he really needs. A deep holiday like that. But yeah, again, don't give the match. I, my, my opinion, Cavani itself, like, I just don't know. Everyone always talks about, again, before I was saying earlier on, before we, got, we went live, everyone always says anything about, like, oh, Ronaldo don't press. Yes, I've seen Ronaldo press. Ronaldo does press. He presses. He gets there. He tries to hold them up. He even instructs them to come up tight and etc. Yeah. And it yes, they showed if we don't create chances, the strikers will never get service. As much as Cavani pressed and all that stuff, Nothing to show for because why the problem is coming from elsewhere. We're not creating mm. chances, but he wasn't effective to me. I'm gonna have to bring up to pretty flock up, pretty flock up. Before I move it on to the match, um, the the um, the media reaction quickly. Your thoughts on the match, man of the match, and Duncan match. <coughs> uh, it was disappointing to see us go uh, through the match after two goals late, but. For me, everyone played shit. I, I would say Bruno, man of the match, because obviously he got us two goals. And literally, I would say all, everyone else was just donkey of the match. Like, no one played for me better. They were all shit. And that's it, guys. We're moving on straight to the next topic, of course, guys. Make sure you let us know who your donkey of the match was, your man in the match was, well, what your thoughts are. So remember to subscribe, smash that like button as well. Big ups to everyone here. But we're going to move along to the media reaction, of course, reaction from the players. Again, with the guys' thoughts on it. After the game, of course, came out with... Let's start off with um, Bruno's um, response of the game, first of all. Bruno said that, of course, he said, I am not happy at all. Everyone is happy to score goals, but I prefer to win the game. I prefer to take away my two goals and let someone else score and win the game. Today, my two goals make no sense because we only got a, 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 we only got one point and not three. Bruno also said, actually, no, Roy Keane also said as well, um, Cavani was poor. I was surprised he, Ragnit, left him on the, the whole game. As you know, Rekin always says something like that. Ragnik, regarding him, he also said, when you are 2 new up, you have to defend it better than we did in the last 15 minutes. We gave away too many balls and were, were not compact, therefore concede two goals. Ragnik also said, very difficult to find some positive after 95 minutes. We had a spell where I, I felt it was our best game since I have came here and completely dominated the first 30 minutes. I'm going to throw this one to you, um, Boche, quickly. Um, he said that, in his opinion, he thought it was, it was very difficult to find some positive after 95 minutes. He said that we had a spell where he felt that it was our best, one of his best games since he's come here and completely dominated in the first 30 minutes. What's your opinion on that? Do you agree with him? Yeah, I think, and this is the one thing I like about Ralph, because I think he kind of, in his press conferences, calls the game as pretty much every other fan. <laughs> Like when we watched the game, it's like, yeah, we were lacking in here, we weren't good enough here. And he calls it where, you know, previous managers would deflect and try, you know, you know, protect players and all that, where Ralph is he's here. Yeah, Mitford wasn't good enough, our passing wasn't good enough, he wasn't good enough. He kind of says that as it is, and I kind of agree with him. Um, to be honest, I think I think um before he even came in, when Carrick was in charge, there was rumors that he was influencing the lineup and his there were um rumors that he he had his philosophy put through what right, right before he came in. If you look at his philosophy and the way he speaks about he how he, how he likes to play, that Arsenal game was to the T Ralph Radnick. 
Yeah, we win the ball, we win the ball in 10 seconds and we score within the next eight. And that's every goal that we scored against Arsenal was exactly the same. We had Maguire pushing up, so every every ball goes forward. Maguire was taking shots in that in, in them games. I think that was a more of a Ralph Randick performance than than we've seen so far. But I think he's right with the comments after the game with Bruno. It's the same thing. Every week these players come out. Oh, we'll be better. We do mistakes. It's not good enough. Yeah, show us. Enough with this with, with this talk. Show us your social media posts every every week. We apologize. Nana, do give, give us the free point and we don't want to hear you. You're not here to be my uh, a friend on social media where I want to see what you're what you're talking about. Show us on the field, get us the three points. Or don't waste no time. Or we get one we get the kids in. Absolutely. See, that right came out of Butch's mouth right there. I set him up for that one, guys. But yes, Raglan also said Elenga did well. He had two good chances to score, but he showed that what I expected him to do. I knew what he would give us, so I played him from the start. Amok, what's your thoughts on that? Ragnit saying that he knew Alenga would do well. He said he, he knew he had two good chances. He said that he knew what he would do and expected him to do exactly what he said. What do you have to say about that? Especially Alenga's uh, performance as well. Yeah, I believe, Um, obviously, he's been the man he has been training these players. Is personally think like he can do something as a youngster. And these youngsters, these days, they got different mentality. Maybe during training session, Alain will be putting in work. So him playing and doing what he done, I'm impressed. Like, it's actually good to see youngster come in and do what he did. He actually did well, like what the manager said. In the first 30 minutes, when we dominated the match, Alain was running up on people. And it's, it brought me back to the old United, when Rashford was just busting this in. I used to run up people in that. But it's... Like I said, we need these same players coming in doing the same thing. Forget whatever been going on in the media. We just come and do the same thing. Alenga been brilliant his past two games. Hopefully, it stays like this, not just a glimpse. Yes, and of course, Ragnit also said that right now it's very disappointed, but we showed what a step forward. But it was about getting the result. It feels like two points lost and given away, which is right. Two points were lost and given away, which disappointed us. And for that, guys, we will move on to the last bit, which, of course, which we will discuss the situation with Anthony Marshall, guys. Uh, after the match, of course, as you guys know, they'd interviewed Ralph. Ralph in his post-match said this famous quote regarding Marshall, where he said, he, Marshall, didn't want to be in the squad. He would have been in the squad normally, but he didn't want to. And that was the reason why he didn't travel with us yesterday. Of course, people, of course, get these words together and they just throw it and they think all sorts. But a lot of aftermath came after that with Marshall later on, very early in the morning, apparently around 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, he tweeted. So when someone wakes up in the morning or lingers at night, can't sleep, there is something there. There is something there. It's like Patrice Evra waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning with a 19-minute post about Manchester United. We've all been there, waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning, like, I want this manager out. I'm hurting right now. You know, it's it's it's, it's, it's normal. Marshall came out two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, saying that I, I I will never refuse to play at a match for Man United. I've been here for seven years, and I never disrespected, and will never disrespect the club and the fans. Marshall was saying that me, I'm in frenzy mode because Marshall wants to leave. The rumors there, there, he's made it clear that he wants to move on. So therefore, if you want to move on, your mind's not in there. I'm going to start off with you, Jex. Everyone else. After that, bring your thoughts and your mind to the situation regarding Marshall and his future. We have 10 minutes and let's go. Let's go. Ding, ding. Uh, Marshall, man, I wish him all the best for the future, you know. And I wish he can go to a league where he can flourish, score plenty of goals, get back into the French team prop in properly and just be the player he can be. But he can't, be, he can't do that at Man United. We've seen him for the last few years now, and he hasn't really done much apart from that. Apart from that one season where he scored what was it, twenty three goals around that. Um, he clearly wants to leave, and he just needs to move on. United have a, a knack of not being able to move players on, man. I think that's our biggest problem. So I feel like the board and Ragnick need to do their utmost to make sure he leaves the club this month, because whoever doesn't want to be there. We don't want to see them on the pitch. Martial already doesn't do much. So 
I don't really need to see him. I think Elen can take his place. But I wish him all the best. Yes, guys. Who else wants to add to that as well? Of course. Uh, with, um, with Martial saying that he's never wanted to play, I've seen some of his performances. He didn't look like he wanted to play when he played. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think I think if you if the manager says that, then he should be responding quite straight away. You don't leave it till, well, as you said, two o'clock in the morning. Oh no, no, I never said that. He's probably he's probably rang his agent and said, "Well, I did say it. What should I say?" Do you know what I mean? And he said that. He, you know, I believe what Ralph said. I don't believe what what he said. To be fair. Um, and- Man, I don't be, I don't, I'm in the middle just because, like, I know there's a lot of politics going behind on um, the back door of Manchester United that we don't know about. Like, we seen Fletcher in the pitch with trackies. Well, he, he could have played. No, but he's he position, though. Is he not meant to be suited up sitting next to them buses and that? You got tracksuit in the pitch. Like, come on. You, see, like, well, you, know, you know what? We, to be fair, with. um. Ronaldo at 36 can't play every game and Rashford of form. I definitely think that Ralph would have needed Martial in the squad. And listen, I don't think it's Martial. I don't think it's him because listen, we seen people say stuff and stood by what they said, didn't it? He said he wanted to leave. Don't you think if he said that he was going to come and say, I said that? Come on, he don't say he wants to leave. Like, this like is the politics I going on. Duties to play, though. Of course, he got to duty play. to play. <laughs> Like, remember, he said this and they said that he's going to win. The truth going to come out because if he kept quiet, it would have been just all right. But now he said something, eventually the truth going to come out. So all I say to us here, let's sit back and watch what happens. I like Mattel, but I want him to go. You get what I mean? I want him to go. But at the end of the day, I just want people to be honest with what they do. There's so much going on at the club that it's affecting the players. It's actually it affecting be- the players. It could be one of them things where it's taken a little bit out of context because we've heard Ralph say in an interview that if players don't want to be here, then they can go. True. Now, if Martial, so let's let's just take that and be like, if he's gone to Martial, do you want to be here? And he's going, no, I want to, I want to leave. Whether it's to play because at the moment he's sixth choice because he's behind, definitely behind Ronaldo, Cavani, probably now Alanga, Greenwood, even Rashford. So he's sixth choice. To play anywhere in the in the front three positions, so it's like, all right, no, you don't want to be here, which means you don't want to play. It could it could be taken in them terms, yeah. If you want, if you don't want to be here, you can leave. Yes, I want to. Yes, I want to leave. Okay, that means you don't want to play. So it could be taken out of context. I mean, I would I don't, I don't know why Ralph. Look, Ralph shouldn't have said that in the first place, but I don't know why. He, Ralph would say something like that if it wasn't true. Let's not forget, if he's really going upstairs at the end of the at, or next season for two years, he's still going to be here. So it's like, yeah, no worries. I'm still going to be here. You're not going to you're not going to be here because I'll, I'll advise the board and everyone to sell you because you don't got the right attitude and right mindset to, to play for the club. We don't even know. I think it's just maybe may, may taken out of um, context a little bit, maybe lost in translation somewhere. But we, we can all, if we go... If we go by the eye test, we all know Martial hasn't really been good enough. And if he leaves, I don't think any anyone will really be complaining. We all, I think we all kind of hoped he was better than he is. But it's just one of them situations. It's just like, I think it's more deflecting from the bigger problems at the moment that the club actually has. So it's like, let's not focus about the result. Martial put this out on his social media. Focus on that. Don't worry about the result. Focus on that. <laughs> Which is really the distraction, <laughs> yeah. We're not talking about the result anymore. We're all talking about the drama now. That's what man. Gonna be, what, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm be not having that, man. I just think that um, Ralph, he ain't got no reason to lie. They asked him why he's not playing. He's told him he just he doesn't want to play. So why would Mattel he lie? He's no, been. But, he, just, he said he'd been there for seven years. Could, he's yeah, never been he disrespectful. Big up M's. He said Germans, Germans don't lie. Too. Germans don't lie. They're straight to the point. You know. Well, that's it. Politicians and, 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 lie. Marshall said he wanted to leave. So I don't know what he's on about. So I, I'm, I'm I'm choosing who I want to believe. The person that said they wanted to leave, they don't want to be here. Are you going to believe them or the person that came and said, "Raw, my man said they don't want to be in this yeah. team in it." I, I just you think know? I just think managers <laughs> managers now have enough. This ways towards Ralph being correct, to be honest. Because as I was saying before, we kind of need Marshall to play because we're kind of short. We've got a few strikers that are off form, and he's obviously asked Marshall to play, and he doesn't want to play. He wants to leave. 
No, no, I don't think still, that's the reason. I don't think that's the now reason. We're relying on Ronaldo and Cavani to get us goals, and we've I don't think that's the reason. reason. No, he said I don't think Martial would have started. He would probably you see Sancho. Yeah, yeah, but, but we needed him. We needed him on the bench. That's what it was. We needed him on the bench. I, I think I mean. the manager, was, the manager, we didn't really need him though. What has he shown us in the last couple of years to say that we need him? Like, yeah, we only need him now. All these people are saying, the "What have they done for us, though?" Come on, take chances. Yeah, like my man said, Martial is like fifth, sixth choice now. True, but right, right. I wouldn't say right now. I'll, it's I'll true. Him, no, no. Right now, it's true. Ahead of Rashford right now because our poor Rashford. Yeah, you would. But he wants enough. to leave. Not to he leave wants to all. leave. And managers don't like when places they want to leave the club. He wants to leave, but he still yeah. needs to play. So him and the manager are beefing. If he's not playing, nobody's <laughs> gonna want to buy him. Yeah, but that's that's the, the thing. First, the only team that's in is Sevilla, and they don't even want to pay. So guys, so guys, 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 so all I want to say now, I just want to hit, I just want to get every single one of you. Marshall to stay or go? Or was he, oh no, no, Marshall, was he wrong or right? Do you, no, no, forget that. Do you believe Marshall or do you believe Ragnit? That's it. That's all I want to know. Go through everyone. And then we're going to wrap up the show because of course we've come to the, the end of the show. I'm going to start with you, Football Capital. Uh, I'm going to say I believe Ragnit, first of all. Now, do you believe Ragnit or do you believe Marshall's situation? Is he telling the truth? Yeah, look, I can't, yeah, I, I think I think it's more Radnik that's that's correct. Um, I just think managers now have, have had enough. You've seen it throughout the Premier League. Two sure doesn't give a shit anymore. Ateta, you know, or he stripped captaincy, you're gone. I think they've had enough of this player power. And I did, like like the guy was saying, Ems was saying, there's no reason for <laughs> the German to lie. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm i sticking to his. But I think I do think it's there's somewhere it's lost in... um translation there between the two players or uh, between the manager and the player or it could be a thing where it's um or uh you're gonna be in the squad Marcio oh, I want to start I don't want to be in the squad well if you don't want to be in the squad don't play and then he's like all right don't play me it could be one of them little little heat in the moment things and now it's taken out of proportion so I don't know I, I'm a little bit on the fence but more to the route <laughs> a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> and Jerome what about you quickly yeah, I think it's def I think definitely Ralph's telling the truth to be honest because as I was saying, we needed uh, Marshall in the squad, and Marshall's probably thinking I'm just going to be sitting on the bench. The spotlight's going to be on me because obviously it's been reported that I want to leave, and you know the camera is just going to be on him, showing him looking like he's soaking, and it's just going to create more headlines. So he's probably just told Ralph, look, if if I'm not going to play in the starting eleven, don't even pick me. I don't want to sit on the bench. That's what I think personally. Yep. And what about you, Jakes? Boy, I believe my boy Martial, you know. I don't know Ragnick from anywhere. He's just been here for four weeks. Cool Ragnick, 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 bruv. Martial's been here for years. I believe Martial. We know Martial, but Martial don't like competition. Ragnick is a bottle. And also, Ragnick is a Ragnick shouldn't have come out to the press and said that, though. I felt mm. like he kind of threw him under the bus. He should have just said, Martial is yeah. not part of my plans anymore. That's it. But these players these players throw the managers under the bus every single week. We have to say managers. Anyway. Right, guys, guys. I, I, I want to get Monzi. I want to get Monzi. We've seen more fight from Martial's wife while Martial's been at the club than Martial. Come on. <laughs> maybe get her into the squad. Shift. <laughs> 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 Don't get listen, listen, I'm with you. Guys, he needs guys, to leave. Move on. Listen, he needs to leave, but it doesn't mean that I don't think he would refuse to play. Come on. Really? Munzi, yours quickly. I want to wrap it up soon. I I believe Ralph. I don't believe Marshall. That's it. <laughs> and what about you, pretty brother? <laughs> I actually love the German mentality, but for some reason, I think there's some guy behind us we don't know. So I have to stick with Martel. I think he said he wants to leave. And he came out and said, I've been here for seven years. I have never disrespect nothing. He showed you reasons. Why, why won't I just believe him? I don't know. We are from nowhere. Uh, he, he, to me, he hasn't shown me any reasons. He's only no, two, but, two no, seasons but out we've never heard, no, we've so never heard any, we've, we've never heard Martel in the media for mm -hmm. anything new yeah, absolutely. He's never said, so he's never said nothing he's one of he's been one of them good players he's a good good child he's just been he's got he's not got it in him to be naughty jesus you're not seeing him play um, can he's i say something 
You guys are out here believing a man that cheated on his ex wife, ex wife, and then got a new wife. So like, yeah. anyway, guys, let's move on, guys. Of course, big up to M that says, "I believe Ralph." I'm sorry, man. He also said, "Let my show, let my show go." Seven seasons, not even cl got close to challenging the title, let alone win winning it. He also said that your boy Marshall, what he has done for the past seven seasons, how many times he's got over 20 goals in the seven seasons, I'm tired of him. But big up to you guys. Big up to you guys who are tuning. Of course, this is the end of the show, of course. Again, you'll see us next week, Monday, 8 p.m. Post be there live as well. And also remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Of course, if we had a little bit of time, I would have let you know where you can find them, boys. But I can tell you them. You can find Football Capital at Football capital for same twitter and also instagram you can also find jerome on instagram at jerome underscore one and of course you can find jegs on instagram jegs underscore united munzi talks of course uh, at munzi talks as well and at pretty flock underscore 16 guys and remember to subscribe to football capital and also subscribe to munzi talks as well and last but not least remember to keep it united Guys, it's hard right now, you know, but as always, remember to keep it united and also remember to keep it red united because we are out. Love from the boys. We'll see you next week. Peace out. Peace. Ollie Peace. out. Oh, he's gone. Eh? He's gone. He, he gone. <laughs> <laughs>